The Mid Barataria Sediment Diversion Project aims to rebuild lost coastal land in Plaquemines, Jefferson, and St. Bernard parishes by diverting the Mississippi River flow. The project comes with vocal advocates and adversaries. Now, this is a complicated, complex, but important developing story, and we can't tell it in its entirety in a single report. So, we begin our continuing coverage with a broad based look at all sides of the issue. This was the old style technique. My grandparents started with this kind of technique. It's called the oyster tong. Mitch Jurich is a third generation oyster fisherman whose family has harvested the Barataria Basin since 1904. His grandparents' original camp, their oyster fishing outpost, is now underwater due to rising sea levels and coastal land loss. We're considered in, inside that Barataria estuary. So, uh, you know, we have now what used to be a bunch of bayous and small bays is now pretty much an open body of water between here and the Gulf. Out on the water and above it, a bird's eye view reveals the coastal land loss in Plaquemines, Jefferson, and St. Bernard parishes. The Louisiana Coastal Master Plan is calling for a major intervention, a $2.9 billion sediment diversion project in the Barataria Basin. The groundbreaking, attended by advocates and stakeholders of the project, signified the start of construction. The largest ever ecosystem restoration project in our state's history, and quite frankly, I'm not aware of one on this scale anywhere in the country, and there are few in the world uh, that can match the size of this project. And with this mid barataria sediment diversion, when it is operating, we're gonna change the physical footprint of our state we will be adding wetlands instead of losing them. The mid barataria Sediment Diversion Project will cut a two-mile channel on the west bank of the Mississippi River in Plaquemines Parish, allowing controlled river flow into the Barataria Basin to deposit sediment. The project is projected to build 20 square miles of land over a 50-year period. It's not the same river it was a thousand years ago. It is the second most polluted river in the country. Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, former Plaquemines Parish president, is a staunch critic of the project. We're going to dump that polluted water into the most rich estuary in the country, and we don't think it's going to kill everything. It will wipe out the seafood industry as we know it today. What's happening in the Barataria estuary could be a cautionary tale for all of coastal Louisiana. You see, it's not just Mother Nature creating the land loss, it's humankind as well. The levee system, oil and gas exploration, and all of it is creating the coastal land loss. Now, the solution, well, it's polarizing for all of the stakeholders involved. Look, everyone agrees that Louisiana's coast needs to be restored. The question is, at what cost and who pays the price? So since 2007, we've restored over 50, 56,000 acres of wetlands in Louisiana. Greg Gandy is the executive director of the Coastal Restoration Authority of Louisiana, the agency in charge of the state's coastal restoration efforts outlined in the Coastal Master Plan, which is updated every six years. 2023 marks the plan's fourth iteration with 77 projects, 65 of which are restoration projects. We've significantly picked up the pace in the last few years. Over 71 miles of barrier islands have been restored and 369 miles of hurricane protection uh, projects have been built. If all of the, the $50 billion, 50-year master plan is complete, we anticipate annual damages to reduce between 10 and $14 billion and the amount of land to be created between uh, 240 and about 314 uh, square miles of land uh, if all of the projects are completed. Sediment diversion from the Mississippi River is a new approach to coastal land building, and critics argue it's untested and that dredging is a better solution. Mitch points to Shell Island and Pelican Island, about 12 miles from Empire, two barrier islands built by dredging the Mississippi River and depositing sediment, which he believes is a more viable alternative to river water diversion. So dredges are not uh, inexpensive uh, to, to use, uh, but you can build land in a short amount of time. That's one of the advantages. 
the, the, one of the disadvantages is when you walk away, that surface of the elevation of the marsh platform, it begins to, to uh, compact and consolidate. And, uh, and over time, it, it's uh, reducing in elevation. Uh, sea level's rising and the land is reducing. They claim dredging isn't gonna hold up. Well, there's proof right there. The Gulf of Mexico is right outside of these islands. One of the most powerful sources of water you got around here. And it's held up to the storms that came in from, from the Gulf of Mexico, Hurricane Zeta, Ida. As chairman of the Louisiana Oyster Task Force, Mitch is the voice of a community concerned about the consequences of the mid Barataria Sediment Diversion Project. To understand their concerns, consider that the estuary is a salt and freshwater cocktail with a delicate and precise mix of salinity and freshwater that gives life to an entire ecosystem and a major source of Louisiana seafood industry. Upsetting that balance could bring catastrophic consequences. Well, the oysters will be totally devastated. They'll be gone. You won't have any more uh, Plaquemines Parish oysters. And that's, that's a given, 100%. The shrimp are going to move on further down the line. They're going to go. They're going to have to get out of Dodge. So will the fish, so will the crabs, so will every other species that can move. The dolphins are not going to leave. They're going to stay here till they die. Bottlenose dolphins reside year-round in the Barataria Bay. This population is genetically different from other nearby dolphin populations. The Coastal Master Plan sets aside mitigation money to monitor the bottlenose dolphins once the sediment diversion starts. The plan also offers resources for the affected communities and the commercial fisher people. Some in the scientific community are also voicing concerns, including marine biologists and geologists, questioning the data backing the mid barataria Sediment Diversion Project. There are a couple of mythologies or misunderstandings around uh, coastal processes. Uh, one, I believe, is that we're in a state of crisis. I don't think that's necessarily true. Uh, the data shows that we've actually gained wetlands area in the past 10 years, 15 years. Uh, that gain appears to be coming from natural accretion. Chris McClendon is an independent geologist closely following the evolution of Louisiana's coastal master plan. He points to newly acquired data showing that current land sinking rates are less than half the values used in formulating the coastal master plan. There's a Appears to be a, a very robust supply of sediment. It's probably being carried in by the tides. And this is this is uh, this information or this data is available through the coastwide reference monitoring system. Louisiana's coastal restoration master plan has a 50-year timeline. Finding common ground with each of the proposed projects proves to be an ongoing challenge. Coastal restoration was supposed to be the state partnering with local government to save our coast. St. Bernard and Plaquemine voted 100%. We don't want it. Louisiana's coastal restoration efforts also aim to protect and restore wildlife habitat affected by land loss and the BP oil spill in 2006. In my report, we'll look at the Coastal Master Plan's impact on Mother Nature and opportunities to foster thriving ecosystems.